Hey, it's Arcsecond, and this video covers cover balance in League of Legends and specifically win rates. We'll be taking a look at the stats from the Korean ladder on OPGG, and we want to have the most amount of information, so we'll be looking at all of the leagues and all of the games from last month. Although we switched the league from all to silver, not too much changes because this is where the majority of games are played. But from this information, we can still draw conclusions about each division and about the state of the balance within the game. So if win rate is the chance of a champion winning a game of solo queue on average, then why doesn't Riot make each champion have a 50% win rate? And the reason is that all champions aren't created equally. Rise with a 45% win rate is one of the best champions in League of Legends. How do we know this? One, we can see how the champion is actually performing. The rank one player in Korea, the third most played champion is Rise, and the last four games in solo queue are in Rise. Faker, who was rank one, now rank two, his eighth most played champion is Rise, and the rank six player, the second most played champion is Rise. So what makes Rise so much better than other champions? And it comes down to their kit. A champion's power is basically their strengths versus weaknesses. If we took a, take a look at Rise's QWE, Rise gains movement speed, a shield, has a targeted E ability on a really low cooldown, um, a targeted snare, and that helps align his Q, which is a skill shot. And that whole combo is on such a low cooldown that Rise is basically always a threat. And there's a really small window to punish Rise. And the thing about movement speed or mobility is mobility increases your range, increases your strengths, while also decreasing your weaknesses. Mobility is really strong. Also global, so Rise Ult or Galley Ult are really strong because just sitting on that cooldown pressures the entire map. Um, again, we can take a look at the rank six player, top two most played champions are Galley and Rise. And so how do you balance a champion like Rise who's still so strong at a 45% win rate? And the trick is you nerf the kit. And that allows you to buff the numbers, which makes the champion more playable for the majority of players, and more balanced. And so what does a kit nerf look like? We can take a look at Ari. Ari's E used to be able to interrupt dashes, um, but they removed that. That's a kit nerf. The Ari LeBlanc matchup used to be a lot closer because Ari used to be able to interrupt the LeBlanc W and negate that damage. Now, ever since Ari lost that E, the extra part of her E, this matchup has been extremely one-sided. And again, we can take a look at how these champions are actually performing. LeBlanc performs extremely well, is performing extremely well, while Ari is basically nowhere to be found. And you can basically you already know just by looking at these win rates, because we know LeBlanc is so much better a champion that has the same win rate, that LeBlanc is going to be strong. If we compare the kids, LeBlanc's passive procs naturally and gives her good survivability. Ari's passive is conditional. LeBlanc has that targeted Q, um, while Ari has that skill shot, and then LeBlanc's W is AoE mobility, and she can basically position at two places at once, which is really strong, and allows her to set up her E. Ari's and LeBlanc's E are very similar, but to do the same thing, Ari has to rely on her ult, which she doesn't get until level six, five or six minutes into the game, and then also her ult has a really long cooldown. LeBlanc's ult is more versatile, and has a lower cooldown. So you can kind of just think about the kids and how like the matchup goes. Ari is a lot more vulnerable. Well, if you give her that E back, that negates her weaknesses. If you buff the numbers of her E, that's not as valuable because her weaknesses stay the same. It just increases her strengths a little. So these champions are supposed to have um, quite the difference in win rate. LeBlanc is supposed to be a few percentage points lower. And so this is bad balance. Bad balance is basically the difference in power between champions or strategies. And that kind of includes like itemization, pathing, um, runes, etc. And the thing right now in League of Legends that's happening is the difference in kits or strength of champions is growing. Now we have Zoe. Zoe is even stronger. Zoe sitting at a 50% win rate is pretty disgusting. Zoe, in my opinion, should have the lowest win ratio in the game. Her kit is right there with Rise, but then she has the RNG on her W, which gives her a huge range of plays, and some of which are so impactful that I think her kit needs to be weighted even lower. She can Redemption at level 2 or 3, which can completely swing a game as it could turn a gank or a dive. And it's even more powerful in this early snowball game meta. So if Zoe's supposed to have a 44 or even lower percent win rate, and again, that doesn't mean she's weak. Basically what that feels like at high elo right now is if like Wukong had a 60% win rate. That's what it feels like to have Zoe at a 50% win rate at high elo or 50% here. 
And so, but why should we care about Hayu though when Zoe for the majority of players is pretty balanced? The reason I think the game should be balanced around high elo is that everything matters more. At lower elo, you can carry with anything, and I don't just mean the champion, but you can outweigh the differences with mechanics. As in, if you know when and where to place a ward, that will help you make up the difference. That can help you outweigh the champions. While at higher elo, that skill that becomes harder and harder to outweigh the champion because everything matters more. And not only that, but the champion kind of enables the mechanics, as in with like Zoe and LeBlanc. The positioning and decision-making mechanic is um, pushed further back. The limit is extended because they have those extra options. We can also take a look at Aurelia, Aurelia rework champion. If old Aurelia and new Aurelia were both on here on this win rate board, the new Aurelia would have to have a significantly lower win rate, yet she's sitting at 51%, which again is really strong, especially at high elo. And also you can com again compare like Aurelia to champions around her for top Yorick, maybe mid fizz. It becomes really hard to outperform an Aurelia. You'd, even if you're playing close to perfect with like fizz or Yorick, because Aurelia is so strong. And that's kind of where bad balance uh, really affects the game because it kind of feels like you're being forced to play these new and rework champions like Aurelia. And so the thing about balance is, yeah, you can always switch but then there's some drawbacks. One, you might not like the playstyle as much. You have like attachments to your current champions or playstyles, and you're kind of losing that time. And then you have to invest time into these new styles and champions. And you're also not quite sure how long a champion is going to be good for. If you knew you had this much time on the champion, it'd be more worth it. Um, and some stuff just gets nerfed or buffed a lot sooner or later than one would expect. Cause it's got nerfed a lot later than I would have expected. Um, Arden got nerfed a lot later than most people would have expected. The thing about champions with good kits though is it's normally worth investment. Like Rise has pretty much always been good. Um, same thing will probably be the case with Zoe or like Azir. So normally for these more complicated champions with strong kits, the time investment is normally worth it. Um, but so the reason Zoe has to have this high win rate is one, she's new and uh, she has to sell, right? It's a business. And also Riot, so LCS is like a marketing tool. So ideally these champions are played in LCS and pretty much all the new champions have been played. Well, like Kai'Sa, Orin, uh, Zoe, etc. So again, the problem, so with like Kai'Sa, this happened with Kai'Sa, another way you can use win rates is again, you see how the champion is actually performing right now. And then you kind of see, okay, this champion is receiving these changes. How big are these changes going to be and in which direction? And, or you can just wait until the changes go through and see like how much uh, their win rate changed. And so that kind of with Kaisa, where Kaisa was starting to perform well and they got huge buffs and then has been really strong ever since. Um, I could see that happening with Pike. Pike also is performing pretty well right now. And so if Pike goes up to that 50% win rate like Zoe, then Pike will probably be pick ban at higher elo. And so what do you do with new champions? Because the other thing about like releasing a champion like Pike is that the barrier to entry is increased. It's harder to pick up Pike and play Pike than it is like a uh, Sona or Nami, for example. And same thing, it's easier to play like Ari than it is to um, play Zoe. So here's a quote from Ghostcrawler who wonders, how will a Lux or Jinx would do if they're new champions today? And so here we can look at games played, which basically popularity and Lux and Jinx are fairly popular. And this is from the Korean ladder. And NA, Lux is the fourth most played champion and Jinx is not too far behind because these champions are good in the long run. They perform well. And so let's say you continue the trend of when you release a champion, the champion has good numbers and that we can see that with Zoe. Um, then let's say if you release a new champion that maybe had a slightly stronger kit than Lux or Jinx, but it's fairly similar, um, and you gave them the good numbers, and the champion ends up at like 53 or 54% win rate, they could still possibly play played in LCS. And then when you, so they'll have great sales at the start. And then in the long run, the champion can average out at that 50% win rate, and that's good for the long run. And then ideally, the barrier to entry isn't too high. Generally, it feels better to like buff. Um, a kit than to nerf a kit though um, because like new Aurelia feels extremely smooth so if you nerf the kit it might not feel as good especially yeah because we've already had the precedent of the current Aurelia but like for our example if we give her back that E 
that pretty much just increases the potential of the champion. Another way you can use win rates is you can kind of see how roles are performing, especially if you're doing sweeping changes. So mid has historically been the best role because of its ease of access to all of the parts of the map. So we have mid, mid, top, ADC support, support, mid, and then like eight through 13, we have a lot of bot lane in here. And then we have at rank 15, we have jungle. And so ADC are bot lane and uh, jungle got the changes with the XP changes to jungle and the itemization changes to ADC. So you can kind of see how this plays out on the ladder. If you didn't have um, a jungler player in the top, like 30 or 40, that can, that might be kind of problematic. You might want to take a look at uh, buffing jungle possibly. The other thing is, so when you, we know indirect buffs or nerfs are coming to champions, it'd be really nice if they're kind of matched quicker with direct nerfs or buffs to compensate, especially if the champions are strong. For example, Graves and Zhao were already performing extremely well before the jungle changes hit. And the jungle changes were indirect buffs to those champions because in the new jungle you hit level three later. In other words, level two uh, junglers are stronger alongside the scuttle changes. And then at least for example, level three jungler got indirectly nerfed and then there was also the Runic Echoes nerf, another indirect nerf to Elise. So it'd be nice if on that patch those changes hit, there is slight or um, there are buffs basically, direct buffs to balance out those champions because there was such a difference between Sinjal and Graves and Elise on that patch. So it'd be nice if the range was smaller. And again, I think the best way to balance the game is have the range of power be as close as possible. And to do that, you make the range of kits. The difference in strength of a kit should be as close as possible and then you can do the fine tuning with numbers and i think that's the best way to balance the game so i hope that i hope this was helpful and thank you so much for watching